Okay, so in this video we're going to show you how to make login and registration work. So this is going to be a little different than some of the login and registration that you may have seen, but it's not that much different. So first of all, when I go to user slash new, this is where I can create a new user and it already has uh, the validations working. So let me go ahead and create a new account. And once I create the account, it, show, it shows a specific user information. I can also sign out. Uh, this is the sign in page slash sign in. And if I go here, this creates a new session. And pay attention to the word that I'm saying. I'm creating a new session. So localhost users new displays a form that allows me to create a new user. And then when I go into sign in, this allows me to create a new session. So I can log in and I can log out by going to sign out. You could also play a little link over here that just links to sign out and it should work. Okay, so how do we create this? First of all, you will see that I have this. This is called uh, Rails Footnotes. And it's a really nice tool where you can see the cookies, the session information, uh, information that's passed back to the views, params, all the queries that are being run, and other things. So let me just go log in and show you some other fields. Assigns. This is um, the instance variable that are available for the view. And all the params, queries, database queries, so that you can optimize your queries and things like that. It's really, really nice tool. I like using it. So I put it over here. I'm also using a simple form and I'm also using Bootstrap SAS. Okay. So, and uh, you can see that I'm just using SQLite. Okay. So how do we create this? Creating this is uh, relatively straightforward. But what we're going to do first is I'm not going to run this, but you should, you should, after you create a new project, Rails new and the name of the project, one thing you can do is I'm going to create a new controller called users. So um, let's actually just do, do something really quick. So Rails login, uh, Rails new login to, let me just create another one. So once it runs bundle install, go into the login to, I'm going to open up the sublime and for the gem file, just make sure that it's using uh, these three. Okay, hold that. So you can just copy and paste those. Rails footnote, simple for bootstrap CSS. And then you will have to run bun bundle install. So run bundle install again. And after you've done that, to get simple form to integrate with Bootstrap SAS beautifully, you can look at their documentation, simple form documentation. At, before you do run, uh, bundle install, you'll also have to do Rails generate simple form install Bootstrap, and it will make simple form work really beautifully with Bootstrap. Just like in my example, in the user's new, see that it did the validation and it displayed the error messages, and this is using uh, bootstrap SAS to do it. Um, all you have to do is put that in your gem and run this in your command. All right, so let's go back to the command prompt. So we're going to create a user's controller. And what are we going to have the user's controller do? We're going to allow someone to create a new form, create a new user, and also display user information, right? So there are three things that we would need. Okay, we would need users new, which is a get method. This displays the form where we can create a new user. And that form is going to be posted to users. And this will handle the post data and create a new user or return validation errors. Users one, whatever, two, is a get method that shows uh, information for that specific user. And the show method in the users controller will handle that. Okay. We're also going to create a session controller, and the session controller will have three methods. One is new method, which allows us to create a new, use, a new session. This is basically the login page. Create method, 
that processes the login information and destroy method which destroys the session or allows people to sign off. Okay, that's pretty important. So now let's first create a new controller. So how do we do that? Rails generate controller users new. So this will create a new users controller. We also want to generate a new model for the user. So what is this is going to have a string name, a string email string encrypted password. This is where we're going to store a string and we're also going to store what's called salt and we're going to automatically generate the string called salt whenever a new user is created for additional security and you can read about this uh, salt more on the internet but it's really straightforward so you can do this this will create a new model and a new migration file so I already did that in my other project and I'm going to uh, provide a sample code either in a zip format or in git or SVN that you can download Okay, but let's look at some of the code and let's just look at look through this. So I already went over my gem file, nothing really new over here. In the users controller, I had new method create and show. So I wrote these codes. Uh, I create a new user instance variable and I pass that to the view. And I later use this in the new.html erb in the users folder. And I'm just using simple form to allow someone to create a new user. So this is basically the registration page. And simple form, they automatically put all of this in a nice input uh, text fields and created a button and also displays all the error messages and everything beautiful. And that, that was really easy to do, right? Okay, um, so this gets posted. This gets uh, posted to create method and if the user validates then we save the record and we redirect back to the user page with the message that the user was successfully created uh, if there are error messages then we just basically render uh, the new okay all right the users model this is the part where it's a little bit more complicated so uh, we allow these fields um, to be accessible and we create a virtual attribute called password okay so attribute accessor password this is the email regular expression we do some validations for the name email password and just by doing confirmation true for this it automatically checks for the input password confirmation which we had over here and um, gives proper uh, uh, validation errors so now there are a few functions there are four functions here that's a little bit different so what we're going to do is before someone tries to save a user model we're going to run this function encrypt password it's a private function what does it do what it does is if it is a new record if it is a new record see if self dot new record then it creates what's called a salt okay and the salt it does a SHA-2 uh, encryption record and it takes the current time takes whatever the user passed as the uh, as the password so which is the password field over there and creates a new encrypted uh, key and stores that into the salt field and for the encrypted password field in the user's model it runs the encrypt function so the encrypt function is that's this function over here it basically um, encrypts the password and whatever password it also combines that password with the salt so that even if they uh, know your password if they don't have the salt um, this encrypted password will be a unique variable a unique a unique uh, unique string okay so it uses this function now we also created what we called an self authenticate function self dot means it's a class method um, if it doesn't start with self dot, then it means it's an instance method. All these are instance methods, and this is a class method. So I can do user class dot authenticate, or for example, user dot authenticate, and put in the email and the submitted password, and it returns the user record if uh, that was a valid information. Okay, so you can study this, uh, study this really in depth, and. Um, it, it, we're just adding another security measurement. We're just creating the salt, which is based on the password and the current time. 
and we're using the salt and the pass password to encrypt the password and store that in the encrypted password bill. Okay, and you can play around with the you know with the models by just going into your uh, your console and playing with some of the commands. For example, user dot all, user dot authenticate is a class. So I can do, for example, michael at village88.com. Let's just put in some fake password, and it returns nil. That means it wasn't it wasn't authenticated. When I created the account, I think for the password I do one two three four five six, and when I did, it uh, what it authenticated and therefore returned the user account. Um, I can also run some other functions like user dot new uh, I can put in you know the email password confirmation I can save it and you know you can save it to see if it successfully creates the record and things like that okay all right so that's the user model for this is I already showed this now in the show dot HTML ERB which is in the view I basically just display the user ID. You can have some other information over here. Okay, now the sessions. So the session controller, I have a, I have three functions. So the new, basically this just displays the form where someone can create a new session. And how do they create a new session? They basically put in their email address and password. It's basically the login page. That's the new um, view for the sessions controller. Okay, so I have a simple form. And because I'm not passing an instance variable, I have to do something a little bit fancy like this, display the error messages and so forth. And this information gets passed to the session controller and the create method handles the post data, right? Okay, I pass the session email, session password in the authenticate function for the user class, user model class. And if the user was able, if the user record was retrieved, then it, goes into the sign-in user and then uh, redirects to uh, the user's path, okay? All right, sign-in, sign-out, uh, I'm going to explain that in a, in a bit, okay? If the user is not found, then it passes the flash variable and renders the view, uh, renders the new. All right, so now we talked about this. This is the login page. It's basically the session new page and I have what I created, what's called a helper. So a helper are uh, just functions that, are, that can be available to the views, okay? So you can study this. I'm not gonna go over this really in depth, but you can, in the view file, um, have access to the current user. And notice that the current user, it just sees if, sees if the session user ID is available. If it is, then it finds the record of that user ID. And then, uh, if not, if, if, if the session user ID is, is not there, um, if it already exists, then it just doesn't change it. If it doesn't exist, then it reads the session user ID and gets the user record for that session ID. Okay, sign in is a, is a, a method that's available to the controller uh, and the view. So basically, I put in the user record, and uh, the user ID of that is stored in the session, and then we also set the current user. So when we created a new session, see that we do the sign-in user, so that we store the user ID in the session user ID, and we store the user record into the self current user, and now uh, the current user is uh, accessible for my controller and the view and in the application I include the session helper so that all of my all of the different controllers and the view files has access to these method and also the current user information throughout all the views and the controllers okay all right so go ahead and study this um, and the other stuff are pretty pretty standard. You should have been uh, exposed to most of these functions over here. And as you recreate some of these uh, exercises, I think you will have a better understanding how login and registration work. So two things that are new is we have the helpers, and we also made our user model a little bit more secure by creating salt. Okay? All right, sounds good.